Okay, hello everybody. My name is uh, Hendrik Adrian. You can call me Rick. Um, I will do the talk about the fileless malware and process injection in Linux, specifically in the post exploitation uh, point of view from the Blue Teamer's uh, perspective here. And uh, I'm a security folks by day, uh, working in the Cyber Emergency Center in the CERT of the LAC. And um, I built uh, with uh, another uh, good people. Uh, we uh, found the uh, malware mistake as the activity after work. And these are the list of uh, the community give back that I did so far. Well, I have like uh, 150 pages for the 45 minutes, so I have to make it fast. Uh, it will be shared uh, within the circle uh, uh, within the uh, Haklu later on, so you can uh, download it later. And then the other activities is in the first, so uh, we are trying to build a good stuff over there. And uh, recently, with the MIS, we successfully to push the ICS into taxonomy, so it will be a great for uh, development to more uh, better place in the internet. This is uh, my signature in the internet, <laughs> so it's uh, very easy. And this is uh, explaining about my daily work, like uh, every day. So uh, I'm 30 years doing this sport, so uh, I found many uh, ideology that is uh, very applicable for the security, so uh, I'd like to introduce uh, some of them to you in this slide. The contents is like this, uh, the backgrounds, and then uh, we'll go to the post-exploitation basics, and then uh, go, going to the process injections, capability in Linux, frameworks that supported it, and other components, and then the how to defend ourselves. Well, uh, I try to be as open as possible. I like open source very much, so it has to be a Dennis Ritchie behind this first slide, but uh, this picture is uh, covering it. So. So why Linux and why post exploitations? Linux is still the most influenced uh, operating system that we are having now. It's everywhere, in house, in clouds, in outer space. So uh, we can uh, we can we cannot say that Linux, Linux is uh, so open, so that is so bad. No, it, this is just a flip side of the this popularity. And Linux executable schemes is all varied, so supporting many execution scheme and scenarios that then something bad happens, the executable, uh, the executable detection ratio is not as good as Windows, and this, this is a poor uh, part of it. Linux operated device can uh, act as many adversary scenarios like a payload delivery host, proxy, etc., etc., and then uh, it supported the, the Linux platform for the post exploitation frameworks. So. Linux is great in design, but has a little bit poor in the implementation because it's too wide to, to cover. Has a little uh, low detection for the malware compared to the Windows or Mac now. And then uh, Linux uh, is actively sold in the market as per it is uh, with a vulnerability in touch. And limitation for the reverse engineering of the Linux uh, kind of the badness codes is uh, very limited. and. Uh, Thank you for the Radare teams in the audience. Now uh, they are really making a very good job to make uh, some uh, reverse engineering easier. And we tried to make several examples for uh, handling this part, but uh, still a lot of things that has to be done. So hopefully this presentation can be used as a security awareness for the this matter. Hopefully to make the Linux becoming more and better uh, implemented and uh, protected in the security, we, we are trying hard to make this cycle going on in the MMD. We do the research, sharing it, educate it, and then regeneration. For the regenerations, I'm doing a lot of the lecturing in my country, in Japan. So uh, within one year, I committed to make a five to seven young reverse engineering. And so far, we are making like a 18 uh, young reverse engineering with uh, hopefully uh, having my equal skill So uh, for three years. So uh, I, I need to work uh, harder for that. And then uh, all of the posts that I uh, I wrote in the Malware Mustai was me analyzing stuff. And then uh, all of the report are there. Frankly, I probably better to write something than to talk like this. It's very nervous. And then uh, some achievement is uh, recorded in the wiki by another uh, members. 
All of the Linux malware uh, research is supposed in the Reddit as a rep repository to explain uh, to to exchange the previous data was be done in another platform. So this is the stuff that I'm doing so far, doing a many kind of the activities. So what this talk is all about is about the Linux security on receiving instruction to run malicious code in the compromised system with highlighting the fileless injection process and framework support into the process. And from the blue teamer point of view, I'm not a pen tester, I'm not a red teamer, I don't know how the red teamer is working. I'm dealing with the stuff and reversing, that's it. So, uh, I'm not using the material for my work, but I'm using the material uh, that we handle as a MMD in these cases, so no other uh, environment is uh, being shared without permissions. Let's uh, compare our strengths. I'm a blue teamer, so I have to know about the red teamer, so I make a several connections and I have a conversation and seeking about the, what the blue teamer in my team is all about. And uh, what I conclude so far is we reverse the threat better but we mostly are hammered by the tons of the incidents. So we pick stuff, we get lazy, and we don't have much energy anymore to do a very good uh, research for it. And many systems to protect. It is uh, very hard to do. We got probably better, but uh, yeah, they, uh, for the right teamer, as you can see in the right side, is uh, they probe and pound better for this. They are pretty active in, and innovative also in the R&D and tooling. So, in my point of view, probably uh, we are doing uh, OSINT better, and but uh, they are doing the OPSEC better, so it's a very hard uh, balance that has to be made here. So hopefully, uh, by this light, I can have another blue teamer in this room to be uh, more motivated and then uh, to know about their strengths to start from the skill set that you're really good at. First learn in the candle is uh, never open your weakness. Pen testing or red teaming is going like this. Uh, it's a control, in the control environment is a, an activity that's uh, involving the usage of the various tools and then techniques to assess and audit systems. That is a concept. And it is supporting to the Linux operating system now. In activities of the exploitations, gaining executable access, information collecting, and so on, up to the persistencies, and then uh, this method are really supported richly from the various uh, online documentation, and this is a, a strong point. Post-exploitation framework was built to support those activities in infrastructure to make assessment the whole process to be more efficient, but sadly, adversaries knows about this too and using make a use of it. So why it is so applicable in Linux because of the every scripting uh, environment is all in there. Research said that 60% uh, of the Linux boxes is online with uh, vital roles like uh, gateways, NAS, and so on. And vulnerability management in online Linux is, is uh, really, really very hard, especially the cloud is there now. There are so many IoT to take care of, and so many instance others too, and all can be scanned online. So post-exploitation uh, post framework is becoming a popular method in the uh, recent threat attacks now, and then the uh, Linux uh, focus uh, post exploited framework are developed are developed well too. So uh, the attacker is uh, doesn't have to like uh, in the area of the king king code for his king code for example. We have to exploit everything with a pearl. I like him very much. The, right now, everyone can just uh, script stuff and do the post exploit uh, framework to inject something to the targets. Then. Let's try what we are doing the best here. I'm choosing the OSIN probably. In legacy, uh, we have to uh, understand what post exploitation is all about and what they can do. So I make a breakdown from my desk work here. Like uh, first, uh, they are taking the blind files, distribution checks, no histories, system information. These are a very uh, usable uh, command that is actually working. Install package lists, networking, configuration files, accounts, credentials, seeking important files, refer selling, get the root, covering tracks, and so on. This are, the, the slides will be shared. It's just very good for you. So uh, don't worry. It will be downloaded uh, from your site so you can use it later on. Now get to the point. Through those kind of the capability, we are having a uh, well, why don't we just script them all in less, uh, instead of using it command line by command line? So uh, scripting for the, this uh, post-exploitation is exists, and it is built to be a framework. 
this framework as per you know is in the metropolitan here like a check vm in mconfig r script actually and then uh, you can uh, just uh, pick up what you need and then uh, run it and it's getting better if you see in, in the couple track here and now what we have is open source leak of the post exploit is in the supporting linux Within seven years in AMMD, I saw the many uh, Linux system got compromised by these tools. So I just uh, pick it up and then uh, make a list of it. Most of them are in the GitHub. So I'm, I'm sorting them from the favorite and fork up there to the not so, so many uh, popularity down there. But uh, this not explaining that the unpopular ones is not being used. So it's a uh, very uh, colorful. But uh, you, you're going to like it if you really are uh, doing the pen tester. <coughs> now, we are talking about the cheat sheets that support this knowledge for it. In previous year, we are having the pen test monkeys, uh, kind of the know how for the post exploitations and exploitations. And then uh, people are starting to gather those uh, stuff all together to the awesome pen testing as a list here. And now we are have a very good guidebook, ebook, many kind of documentation for the cheat sheets that, that being used to penetrate some things. And uh, the the know how is getting better. Like often security here is a contain a very good a recent uh, information about those stuff. And we are having this one too. This is all available in the internet, and uh, adversaries are seeing too and implement several tactics to do the same. Not only that, infrastructure. Is uh, becoming the last evolvement from the frameworks. Why not? Uh, the attacker, as an, an attacker, and uh, there are Linux uh, boxes everywhere. Uh, they can make a jumper proxy forwarder in many ways. These are the, some comments that can show you the capability, and there are some more for the tunneling and another proxy tools. They are making it for the elf uh, written in the Go, written in the Cyton, for example. There are so many th tools about that. I'm not going to share it in these uh, slides. The quoted redirector are placed in the front of the post exploit uh, framework server C2 to discover the resilient purpose to quickly burning. Probably you will think like this kind of the infrastructures as uh, we are seeing uh, many times in the pen test labs. But actually, what happened in the wild over there during the attack or incident is going to be like this. It's a very complex operation is going on. The attacker is up there and we are down there. They are having a mini kind of the, uh, these are the scanner, payload servers, and the C2 server are here. We're not so sure, but the C2 server can be one or two frameworks over there. And everything is proxying, routing, and redirecting. This is actually the scheme that uh, we are battling. But uh, less, of, less and less of loot even knowing about this, so we are thinking about uh, this kind of the infrastructure all the time. So, the situation is not so good. And then, uh, yeah, many times uh, during the incident, my boss is calling me, where do we are right now? And uh, the situation is uh, never good. Second lesson in the candle, never ever let your guard down. And what happened is uh, you got injected. Remember the stuff that you're good at? In my case, is this. It's not uh, applicable about uh, my uh, reverse engineering if uh, the radar I team is not there. So a uh, big uh, applause to the radar team, uh, which is uh, supporting to us very much. Then process injection. By definition, it's a method to executing arbitrary code to the address space, in either in the process of memory or in the kernel space. That can be a possible, this is according to the MITRE attack. The purpose is to learn malicious program, not to leave any traces to the disk and be evasive and undetected. In practical, it is used in many kind of the exploitation and post-exploitation framework for it. In Linux, it's like this. First, we have to know that the code injection uh, method is uh, using the injection in the RIP addresses, mostly being done like that. And the tracing software is being used for it. Uh, mostly in the Linux, there is a ptrace uh, or can be wrapped in another software like a GDB, DBX, etc., to control the process flow and then enumerate the address to inject after the state of injection is gained. This is very important. Second, shared library executions can also be injected to the memory. 
Well, common ways to do that is uh, using the LD pre preload is either going to be the command line or you can call it LD preload in the shell or doing the LD uh, loader as an open uh, stage, DL open mode. Third, code injections uh, to the address of the main function in the running process. In this in this stage can be done, but uh, not every common, uh, not every process is uh, running from the main function. So some preliminary execution probably messing up with the uh, analysis. So the other stuff is uh, using the techniques of the ELF injection. During the execution execution process, ELF can be used for uh, to load something, to execute something in the memory space too, but uh, and uh, that it can be used for the injection, but uh, it is very complex. I'm not going to uh, use it uh, now. Another one is uh, as per uh, vulnerability testing, buffer overflow uh, method can be used to inject the code uh, directly to the stack, which is having the NX uh, mode is on, NX is uh, executable. And the worst part is the combination of this all. For the, for the P-Trace, it has uh, so many ways, like uh, in the trace me, for example, or you can set option to set the uh, register values to to make sure which base of the injection that has to be made. And then the, the favorite one is uh, using the interception or of RIP or set the register point to the IRP, uh, RIP. Interception uh, RIP is good. Uh, you have to set uh, firstly about the values of the RIP there. And then um, after that, uh, it will be executed afterwards. Set register, set, set, set registration for RRP. You, you also were using the set registration and then uh, get, grab the values and then uh, point it to another RRP. Then you can detach the processes and then the, uh, the execution of the shell code can be run up with that way too. Well, basically it's something like that with a, a V-Trace uh, approach. Real, in this, real incident started, incident number one. What's wrong with this picture? Probably, well, we don't have that much time. So this is a kind of the stuff that uh, you have to look. There is a bogus date is running and listening to the 444 TCPs. So uh, this doesn't look very good. So uh, all you have to do is start to check on it. Is it fileless? There is no file that related uh, in the file system about the uh, bin date. Bin date is uh, like uh, the legit one. So. We have to think about uh, something is wrong. Well, you can go to the memory based of the what written over here in the in the maps, and then start to attach uh, with a radar, and then uh, you can find the elf header is there, and then uh, you count the header in, in the precise way with, a, with this formula. You can know exact size and dump it and start to analyze it. The other one, okay. Uh, after you analyze, it's gonna be like this. It's a uh, you can go to the entry zero, blah blah blah, and start to analyze. Or you can go straightly to the memory and then uh, just uh, seeking uh, about the main part. But uh, I'm not recommend this uh, hot uh, analysis because of uh, probably anti debugging scheme can be worked too to to prevent you to doing stuff like this. So in the memory address in the date workspace, there is a cell code running like this. So this is the result of that connection, probably, not sure. I'm a forensic guy, so probably something is wrong. There is not, there is, there is no clue what it has been injected with. So I have to figure out with a forensic ways and then I'm using the pseudo Linux for the DFIR and then uh, there is a cool tool, tool score uh, test disk and then uh, we just uh, make a hot forensic of the system and find there is a binary call injecting over there being, in, being deleted, recovering it and finding this, this is uh, the binary itself making analysis for it, and there is a two blob of the data being loaded. One is the stop, one is the sale code. Sale code is uh, like this below. Sorry for the, this uh, pointer, and with the uh, exact uh, data like this. So this looks like the loader for the this uh, sale code to the memory. The, the loader itself goes like this. The injecting codes looks like this, and then the pre-trace is used to gain the state of memory injections, and then uh, will be injected to the memory afterwards. Then the shell code has the stop and the shell code part. The stop is to make sure that it has to be forked, and then the, if not, it's, it's got to be exit like this. 
And if successfully forked, then it will start to do the opening the socket, doing the bind, sys listen, and then the accepting connections. Then afterwards, it will uh, parsing the data in past through the SH command over uh, uh, bin SH over there to be executed. So uh, this is a very simple stuff. And after reversing it further to find that it's a very common uh, bind cells, and then, uh, well, nothing so interesting about that, but this is the point. After you're handling the case of the uh, injection, the reverse engineering is a must because you have to know exactly which state of the intrusion that has been made so far. So in this case, as per written over here, we can see that the date uh, program was forked because of the cell code and it will not stop binding if, uh, uh, bin, if, uh, bin SH is not being executed. But the program is still listening to the fort uh, 4444, so probably the, the, the further intrusion, uh, hasn't been made yet and then the sysadmin is, uh, successfully disconnected from the internet, uh, beforehand. And then the Linux on memory analysis is uh, very important. In each uh, memory injection case, you can do a non-memory hot analysis for the inject injected uh, process uh, case like this. But uh, you also need to uh, understand that uh, uh, many, many, many kind of the possibility can happen if you are doing the hot analysis for the binary in reversing. So uh, this is a sample of the legendary injection scheme number. Digging further is coming from this tool. So uh, it is uh, like this tool is happening there, core parasite. And this tool also uh, is uh, served in the GitHub. I regenerated it to find a more uh, forensic clue that uh, what I have to seek in the disk or in the memory further and find it like this. It's matched to what's going on with the concept of the injecting uh, through the uh, P-trace. So that's got to be it for the first case. Second case. You know Honeypot, doing Honeypot. You know Kipu, you know Kauri. There is a core directory over there containing the many script that can simulate it, all of the command and the systems. And uh, this attacker is doing a heavy implementation to hack the uh, research. There's honeypot and putting uh, some processes over there. What is wrong with this case? Okay, make it short. There is a bogus call uh, bus.sh over there. And then uh, there is also a library called lduccLib.so. I never heard about the uh, uccleap.so. UC so UC lib so is there, but but it but it's not uh, with uh, that's this kind of the pronunciation. So, and then checking further with the memory maps, it having in the same PID. So probably you got the file as injection over there if you don't have it uh, the the sample in your hands. So the bogus bass sh is only doing the looping here. And then uh, I go straight to the what library is there, and then uh, practically library.so shared object is also uh, made by ELF, so you can define the header by the Arada recommend. Thank you for the Maijin who's uh, showing this command during the Articon 2018. And then, um, yeah, and then you can calculate the header to make a size of the binary and dump it. After being done, make it short. This is what happened. It parse everything that uh, uh, coming incoming to the uh, bin SH to be executed. Now, what do we learn in the second case? Not only static or dynamic uh, ELF binaries, but module, shared objects, cell codes can be injected to the process. Hot forensics is good, but you will need the cold forensic too. See the number three? This is actually the command being used for the injecting the, that uh, library to the, to the to the system. So it is uh, doing the cold forensic. check. I can find it to, in the swap out uh, area that uh, being saved into a uh, disk as a cache. This is file case, yes, uh, because I cannot find this uh, command that uh, I don't want to say it. And then. Um, this is one of the uh, example of the uh, uh, fileless ones. Another one is uh, attackers tend to inject, to, to inject something to the decoys as much as possible because of uh, you can inject stuff to the SSH, to the best process, but uh, they don't want to mess uh, too much and uh, they want to uh, make uh, much alarm. If they have time 
actually going into the system and uh, erase all the history and finding out about how to camouflage uh, the decoys and uh, injected code to the your system, they can do almost everything. So going to the OSINT mode, we know this is uh, coming from the Linux inject, and this is the command actually. Try to regenerate it again and find that this is the actual sequence by the tracing. This is actually the syscall being used. It's using the ptrace and being injected to the memory. ptrace based process injection that I handle so far is coming from these sources. It's all in the GitHub. There's so many of it. So uh, this will be shared. You will see. And I sorted also from the favorite and the fork uh, uh, numbering here. So it's stuff that you will uh, have to say, uh, care about. The other injection is a zero object. We are talking about a good example here. We had the Mayhem framework before in the Linux. So it's coming from the Ukrainian attacker. And then uh, they are using the LD preload to use to uh, inject malware to zero, zero object to the kernel to perform the intercepting of the syscall. It's almost fileless because uh, they have to inject it anyway through the PHP uh, interface. To the to the system, so uh, that one is not fileless. Well, in, well, shortly uh, the threat is using the LD preload command to load the Mayhem installer shared object to the memory and intercept the syscall to download the payloads. Then they go back to the real uh, call afterwards. This is the code. In case for you to try to uh, demonstrate by yourself, you can compile it and run in, and then uh, you will you will see this kind of the message appear. <laughs> Now, notable process injections, which is uh, using the very known methods. These methods are not yet found in the incidents, but uh, has a big potential to be used by adversaries. Combination method and scripting is used, so the level is very high. Skillful attacker or uh, frame framework builder can make this a uh, uh, very good use for them. First is a sector seven, pure in-memory uh, code injection site. It is... Uh, a known concept that's being used uh, in memory uh, only injection with a clear samples over there, but it is using the Python. Once you are using the Python, every command line that has to be executed to run the cell code can run in the memory uh, space of the script process. So you will not seeing, you cannot find it in any kind of the forensic for that. If you're lucky, you can swap it out. But uh, there is a uh, very difficult for that, and for this purpose, Python, Ruby, etc., can be used. Another one is a uh, Gotham Digital Science is making a Linux-based interprocess code in injection without ptrace itself. They are not using the ptrace for it, but uh, they are instead uh, counting the uh, proc maps and proc mem for it, and then using the LD preload ways to uh, overwriting the stack. So the stack. So this is a very uh, combination way of the P, not using the ptrace, but uh, using the ptrace concept to, to hook the, the right address to be injected, and using the pre -P LD preload concept and then uh, combining it with a vulnerability exploitation for the writing the stack stuff. I'm recommending you to try this. Another way to uh, inject the shared object to the memory is uh, using uh, this uh, research. It is using GDB as the armor of the ptrace, but it is using, okay, uh, GDB as an armor for the ptrace, but actually it's a ptrace is running, okay? So then the, but it is uh, using another concept to inject the memory with a uh, libc uh, functions called DL open mode. This is actually what the Linux inject is uh, trying to implement here. There are so many assemblies code, I'm sorry about that, but uh, this is the part that uh, actually being injected there. You can see the function of the injected shared library is being called. Well, uh, thank you for the megabits. Uh, last night I just uh, installed the Ghidra uh, decompiler into my radar, eh? so uh, I don't need the Ghidra, Ghidra anymore. <laughs> then the, this is actually the, the, the library that's being, uh, that being uh, called. The in, it's called the inject shared library uh, functions, which is actually opening the DL open mode to, to make uh, injection of the uh, memory possible. It is plain clear there here, and you can see it in the internet. Now we are going to the sophisticated fileless process injections. There is a one. Uh, there is a combo between the open memfd create send file and fxxcva. 
So what's wrong with this picture? Come on, guys. You are blue teamer, okay? Try hard. Harder. No? Okay, this is a what's wrong. There is, there is, this ping is running, but uh, in a very wrong way. As you can see, no one is pinging with uh, this kind of the port, and ping is not using the TCP protocol uh, by the default, so uh, maybe something is bad is going on. <laughs> so, there is, a bogus, there is a bogus object called A in the RAM disk. Where is it? Down here. Oh, sorry. Come on, come on. Go away. Well, uh, okay, here, in the bottom. There. And then um, the bogus ping is connected to the remote host. The ping and the A is related in the one PID session. So if you see it uh, clearly with the file and the stat, the result is gonna be like this. It's showing you exact uh, execution, uh, uh, the data stem of there. And then the main, stem, uh, main space of the A and ping is not in the same workspace. Workspace, so meaning that the execute the execute the execution of the this uh, two uh, uh, file is having a lag, and the uh, ping was executed a few milliseconds earl earlier. So we are assuming that the ping drop A via these connections. Is it fileless? Let, let's take a look. A becoming uh, after being reversed, uh, it, it is uh, only a bin sh binary, and then the what happened is uh, the A one. A is a uh, we uh, ping is not ping, but a back connected parser to execute the remote port with parsed block from the data from the remote, and then to be executed and, uh, and to be safe and executed as A in the RAM disk of the Linux. So uh, below is uh, the IR process to cook this uh, incident. This is what actually happened. And over here, you can see the SHM is, is written with uh, data and then saved as a file called A. So what is this scheme is all about? It's back connecting, receiving data, save it to the RAM disk. Is it work? If, uh, it, if this is uh, uh, executed two times, so probably the adversary can uh, affiliate the save in the RAM disk A file and then uh, try to execute it again in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the RAM disk. So, is it not a post exploitation? Maybe, but maybe not. Conclusion: I conclude that preliminary analysis for the further forensics, and uh, probably that attacker is not uh, gaining much uh, connection for this scheme. Oh, we don't know about that. So let's uh, focus on the OSIN for it. Finding that uh, actually this uh, droppers is being used. So I try to regenerate the, the, the this dropper to the uh, Linux uh, in the process uh, uh, in, in tracing, and then uh, finding out that, that this is uh, what I really want to see. Another concept is uh, using the M, the memfd injection for the time uh, uh, for the time fs for the RAM disk, as per we discussed before. But uh, this concept is now a, a becoming uh, evolve. Right now, it is wrapped in the Perl, and then also becoming the de facto Cepheus uh, fileless uh, injection framework in the Fire Elf, which is built in the Python. So this is a very nasty one, and then the, you, you can find the trace of the uh, uh, binary over there. We are really in the bad situations. Okay, there is another uh, cool stuff. Injector without using the libc, bypassing ALSR, and uh, supported the multiple argument. Called, uh, I'm not sure. Is it, is it? It is in the French language. Call it mandible. So mandible is basically find the execu executable section that can be uh, injected itself to the memory first, and then the inject itself with uh, uh, with uh, to to that uh, enough space uh, under uh, 50 kilos, and then uh, attach it to the as uh, with a ptrace, and then the back up the registration state, and then the back up the, reg uh, the executable section too, and then inject the mand mandible code in there. After that, mandible will load the file to be injected to the destinated uh, spaces or process in the memory, and then the, if this, uh, the injection is done and becoming exit, mandible will be unloaded from the memory. 
So the concept is very good. So you will not see, you can bypass the ALSR by doing that in the current uh, Linux and I tried to many uh, distro already and then the, unless you, you have to make a strict uh, setting for the, um, SE Linux, uh, probably you'd better uh, try to test about uh, this, um, uh, uh, tools into your uh, system. Behind the skin of the reversing mandible is, uh, this is a source code, uh, actually that being reversed. You will see stuff like that. And, uh, after you got injected, uh, you will see, uh, stuff like this in the, uh, radar. Eh? And, uh, this is actually the, 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 the part that, the, the injection being done. The injection for the mandible is uh, done, done by the PT, uh, uh, uh loading here. And, uh, the concept for the injection is using the P trace. It's not that savvy, but, uh, uh, pivoting for the ALSR and then, uh, using the Pi for the compiling, uh, tools for the this tool is uh, really, uh, making a real, uh, mess to the, what happened in the current process injection. This is, uh, with the Guidra. The result is like this. It is a very beautiful. I like it there. So the pro and cons about the mandible is a pivot of the injection is a pro successfully compiling it with the five make a lesser libc usage becoming lesser trace in there. And we don't know how the payload, uh, the payload gets in the memory of this, uh, go to the, if this going to the post exploited, uh, framework. This will be a ba very, very bad news. Harder for sake because so many changes that has to be taken over here. And then the below is a, in the yellow color is a common land that actually can be done with the mandible. The cons, in this POC, they are using P-trace, but what if MEMFD is used, and what if another one is being used for making this uh, injection happen, then uh, it will be uh, very, very bad news for us. But don't worry, we thought, I'm omitting the P-trace stuff, and all of the injections, uh, Binary, I compile it with a pi and then I code it with a yarrow rule like this. And, uh, it's, uh, very, uh, becoming detectable right now. So, uh, you don't have to worry about this. And I shared the rule already in the Yara rules. So, uh, there are so many, uh, people are asking, give me the binary, give me the binary. I don't give them the binary. I, I give them the rules instead. So you have to compile it by yourself. But, uh, if, uh, any R, IR folks who would, who'd like to know it better, please, uh, directly, uh, make a, Contact to me. Last chapter. If you are prepared enough, the better your chance will be. Well, these are for the, this is only for the blue teamer. So, uh, you have to know about the, the cell codes and where they are generated. You have to know about the cell, back connect, bind cell, reverse cell, etc. cells. And you have to, uh, understand about the process injection already explained, preference escalation, payloads. And persistency, and then another one is a post screen. This is the checklist. For the sale codes, uh, this is a good checklist for you to try to seek. And then, um, I recommend to try the Venom and try the Packet Storm's, uh, provided sale codes and try to compile it and reverse it. And try it. Otherwise, you will never know. Next. This is the concept of the wrapper of the sale code, the uh, meet, uh, I, I refer by the radar. Most of the sale code that you receive from those sites can be seen as per this. So you just, you just have to, to focus on the, uh, 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 below ones. This is the wrapper scheme. Then the Linux payloads is, uh, have uh, so many variations, uh, variations, and then, uh, there are, uh, persistency installer, rootkit, backdoor, rat, uh, cultivations like manner of botanics, whatever. And then, uh, it's gonna be a very, uh, different topic in the malware parts. I want to talk about the privilege escalation a bit. We know that the privilege escalation in the, uh, uh, as a root, uh, in the kernel, as exploitation is happening, weak setting is making that happen, other vulnerability is making that happen too. But I found a lot of uh, privilege escalation in Linux is causing by the GTFO binaries. These binaries listing in this site is often used a lot for the making the escalation to gain the root access by the adversaries. And then the uh, some of the keys are successful, some are not, uh, and some are not who are the user who know how to implement SE Linux well. So this is the stuff that we have to, to really, really uh, concern. Then the several advice. 
Well, as a blue teamer, hopefully that uh, this presentation will give you a better stand to uh, handling the post exclusion in the Linux in environment in the future. Many variation, variation of the Linux distribution devices and services to support and uh, to polish with a better policy, which is uh, very hard, but we, we have to try to, to do it. Firewall, it. firewall is a black hole. You cannot block what you don't know first. And then the, if uh, you are getting some kind of the injection and make an outbound and get the inbound, you cannot make a rule of it because you don't know. So forget those. But uh, we have to make a scheme to kill the chain, in, the chain of the attack instead by knowing each component of it, like this, to break down. So ICS is a different obstacle. We need to sometimes to run the debugger under the ICS. I'm, the, I'm in the ICS uh, uh, base of the cert, actually. And uh, I'm putting the radar in the many kind of the small devices. Don't say it to me about uh, this uh, IoT, so I'm going to skip it. Clouds. Clouds, uh, I don't know, uh, better for you to prepare to do the hot forensic instead of uh, getting the image to be analyzed later on for the cloud environments. And uh, don't shut down the machine if uh, you've got the incidents and uh, don't scan it too much because of your, your, you're going to ruin the forensic afterwards. And then the sharing your readiness for the community is very good. Blue Teamer steps in handling process injection is going to be like this. Be resourceful, resourceful and use an independent good binary that you're very good at. Investigate, as per I explained before, probably it will be a good start for you to handle this kind of the uh, post exploitations. Three things that uh, you have to bear in mind about the being Blue Teamer is that we break codes better first. Then we can... Uh, you know, we, we have to regenerate it. We have to make sure that we know it. We don't have to worry about the quantity, but we have to make sure about the quality of our analysis that can be used. And, doc and everything has to be well documented afterwards. And prepare. I want to share everything, but uh, there are so many bad guys are following, for example. So you have to learn how to do uh, the OPSEC. Uh, we're not so good in the OPSEC we are, uh, compared to OSIN, but uh, we have to try this. For the user, there is a list of this that you can share to your users, your, to your customer, to your protected networks. So uh, it is a mini advice here, so probably uh, it will be useful for you. I'm not going to say it one by one. And uh, for the operating system itself, probably uh, P-Trace access has to be more secured here. And then the LSR can be bypassed. Uh, we have to think about the not letting friend leave process, injecting another process without the interaction for the user or the operating system, operating system to confirm. And then the Linux is designed, is designed as a, a secure OS, but uh, not so many people are using SE Linux. This, these are the reference. Uh, first is uh, read about the, what kernel is all about. It's a very good start for you. I will update this uh, presentation with a ton of the list afterwards uh, before being un downloaded to you. It will be a share. Uh, you can ask the Alexander over there for the, for the uh, access afterwards. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much for having me in the Hack Loop. And many thanks to a lot of good people who are supporting this uh, uh, community back efforts of the Mamastai and then uh, to the Radar too. And for the audience, if you find it useful, please uh, block your own injections and share it to the community and see you in the next year Hack Loop. Thank you very much. Hi, I know everybody is smelling lunch and it, et cetera, but uh, are there any questions in the room here? Yes. This is actually not a question as much as a tribute. I've uh, been talking to you on Twitter for many years now, and I must say that your tweeted live dissection of malware on request by desperate community members is and has been really highly appreciated by a lot of people that I know. So thank, thank you. you for your tribute to the InfoSec community. Thank you very much. <laughs>